just doing it. Okay, with the filmmaking team of Avatar, The Last Airbender, Suki and Sokka, Jeffrey is the director, Jonathan is the producer. This is a, a, a Last Airbender uh, fan fiction film. It's four minutes long. It's It seems like they're doing really well in the festival circuit. It's also on YouTube. So guys, tell us what's the motivation to do a fan fiction film? I know you guys were part of the 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 Bobo Fett one. Uh, one was the one visual effects and producer and you were the cinematographer. So tell us why, what's the, what's the fascination with fan fiction? Uh, Take it away, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're just huge fans of these like IPs and the, like, we just want to pay homage to like, kind of like the nostalgia that we have for these. So like a lot of passion goes into these. So like Boba Fett was like a favorite of the director who did that one on our team. And this one, it's like, we are big fans of Avatar. That's kind of what started the YouTube channel. And so we thought this was a fun scene to kind of recreate and put a different twist. And so, what, so what's the story? What, where is the, where are we in the origin story of, of this, this uh, fan fiction? Like, where are we exactly? So in this one, I mean, this is definitely like a different take on how it unfolds in the cartoon, but like, it was just kind of like retelling. It would be like episode. Um, it just when they go to Kyoshi Island. So this is the first episode, episode three, I think. Episode season one. Yeah, in the cartoon where like Sokka meets Suki, and so in the cartoons a little bit different. We kind of elaborated more in the fight sequence. You got anything to add, Johnny? Or yeah, I mean, one of the things is. Uh, like Jeff said, we're huge Avatar fans, and I think like we're huge proponents for uh, obviously it's just paying homage to a series that we grew up with and we really love. And what we wanted to do was like any other live action adaptation is that you want to stay true to the character elements that you have from the original source material. In this case, the cartoon. Yeah. But then you expound you expound on that. So, for example, in the story, um, Sokka just kind of naively has a, uh, you know, a sexist predisposition towards women because he feels like women are meant to, you know, uh, stay home, cook, clean, work, that type of thing, because he grew up in a very conventional tribe. And that's what a lot of women supposedly did in his tribe. And so when he meets this uh, young girl who's a warrior for her tribe, he kind of, you know, in in the cartoon he kind of throws as like oh that's funny like yeah you know you're women and you probably can fight but you know fighting's mainly for the men so uh we we just kind of built on that a little bit in the fan fiction uh lot um short that we did is that we show that same nature but instead of just kind of having a quick quarrel like they do in the uh cartoon series we want to build this more elaborate fight like jeff was saying that would be very entertaining really kind of break down these two characters who are both warriors for the tribes and how they would interact in a setting like that and we had a lot of fun doing that just choreographing this fight scene the actors that we used were fantastic and so we thought that would be an honorable adaptation for live action to show to honor the elements of the cartoon but also to kind of bring to new light this this version of these two warriors fighting each other gotcha and so then you're you're kind of you have to like stay in the lane of the series you can't venture off because then the fans or the your viewing audience will not respect you <laughs> they can be pretty fickle but at the same time you got to give it a little bit of a it's that fine line you got to give it a little bit of a of a unique twist that's something that you can imagine that that could happen but it hasn't really happened yet i guess yeah, and we yeah. kind of wrapped up the characters a little bit. So, like, I mean, in the cartoon, Sokka wasn't as experienced as a fighter. So in this one, we definitely gave him a lot more movements and stuff like that. And we tried to incorporate some of the movements from the cartoon in the choreography. Like, um, they obviously didn't have quite as an elaborate fight in the cartoon, but there's some el elements that we snuck in there to try to, like, you know, like, that fans can recognize. So... And then you, like you said, it's a cartoon, so you have to find cast. You have to find live, like real people. First of all, were you ever thinking of making it a cartoon or no? Never. Right. <laughs> yeah, live um, action's way easier. <laughs> sure, of course, but at the same time, you you have to like really, if you go a beer off from the tone of the and the style of the animation, then it's 
you you've lost everybody right so this is the the unique twist is that it's live action i guess too right yeah that's true yeah and so, so i was just gonna say the cast like so you have to find the right cast this is obviously extremely important right yeah so johnny is actually really good at networking and he found uh actually one of the cast members reached out to us that she she wanted to do a suki short and so we had to find the counterpart for Sokka and it was kind of hard. Johnny is the one that found him. Actually, he kind of did like the actor who did Sokka was actually in, is he in Virginia, Johnny? Like Maryland. He's from Maryland. He goes to, he's NYU, I believe acting school. So um, yeah. Uh, the kid does a really good, well, he does a re- the actor does a really good impression of like uh, the cartoon Sokka, but keeping it kind of real. So we flew him over to utah where we're at that was kind of the biggest challenge is uh coordinating travel schedules i mean we're very low budget so that's yeah. pretty that's pretty bold that you did that though so he's he's like he goes to school at, and uh and nyu yeah 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 his, yeah his name's grant mateo and he is a really really he's I, I think he's 20 now so he's young and he's just like a really bold actor like he's really good at what he does he's really talented and so we found him on i think i found him on instagram and you know we just talked a little bit and then he sent me some pictures and then some audition reels and i heard his voice impersonation of the cartoon character and the hardest part when you tried like you were saying when you try to adapt something like a cartoon or animated character to live action and especially that character supposed to be comical you you're you're walking a really, really fine line of like, is this going to be like, you know, believable, realistic, or or is this just going to come off as totally cringe and corny, you know, like, Mm -hmm. because he's very animated. And so Grant did a fantastic balance of having that same energy, that same, like, again, animation, but he, uh, he kept it grounded with live action. And he, he comes off as really funny, like he's very believable, really authentically, like funny in in his presentation of that character Sokka so he was perfect like we we posted clips of him on TikTok and stuff and people were just like oh my gosh this is like a live action embodiment of Sokka the cartoon character yeah and the same thing you don't want him to do an impression right of the character you want him to kind of make it its own one would assume so he's yeah toned down and we try to give him a little bit of character through the writing and then yeah so he's a little bit tone down but his sound and his pitch is like i feel like a little bit more natural (laughs) so yeah Um, and then so what so you flew him in were you worried that like that it wasn't good like sometimes someone did something really good on zoom (laughs) and then you he he, then you meet him and it's like it's like you know it doesn't work or like were you guys worried a little bit or yeah, I mean, like, so Liz, Liz is the other counterpart. So she yeah. did the Suki. She helped with choreography and stuff like that. So she was, you know, our first contact. So the main thing for us, because they're doing such like um, the choreography, was seeing if they have a good like chemistry together. So we did do a bunch of Zoom calls where we kind of rehearsed the lines and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the stressful part was like um, Liz, since she's closer, we could bring her up from Vegas to here and we hash out the choreography amongst ourselves but Grant hadn't seen any of the choreography yet or has learned any of the choreography so that's probably the most stressful part was like oh so this this guy can act and he can you know he can sound the part but can he actually do the choreography right because uh coordination and yeah (laughs) control for her safety as well so and so yeah, she, and- so she's based in, uh, in Utah. No, she's in Vegas. Okay. So yeah, so our our cast, you know, so the only people local was the film crew, and then all the actors. So there's only two actors were uh, remote. Gotcha. And so. and so tell me about the. Uh, so you got so then did you do some uh, rehearsals with them, like to make sure that they're on the same page? Uh, yeah, basically we had some zoom calls where they ran their lines, but for choreography wise, I'm pretty sure that Grant just learned it like the night before we filmed. And also want to point out that Grant's doing well, right? Like he's, he's like, he's in the mean girls movie. 
he's got a pretty uh pretty ambitious uh TikTok account. Like he's got a lot of a lot of viewers, so he's on his way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, Grant's super talented. So um this would have been the first time if we we cast a an unknown actor and then they, they become a star. So we did another live action avatar um fan film and now that uh that actress, she's a K pop star in Korea. So you never know who you're gonna get. <laughs> and so yeah. but Grant Grant, Grant and Liz did not disappoint. So Liz, we were able to meet her beforehand, like Jeff said, choreographed the fight. And she obviously was able to showcase that she she's a, she's a martial artist. She's really good at what she does. So um, she helped choreograph the fight and she came up with some really cool details of it. Um, so Grant, obviously, that was a nervous part was when he came out, he was going to have to learn it in a day or the day of, which is kind of what you're limited to limited to when you have such a short time frame and budget. And he didn't disappoint. He did a fantastic job. Like they did amazing job. Um, and you can kind of see that showcase on the screen. It looks fantastic. Yeah. And Grant's super fun to work with. So, <laughs> and so is Liz. They're both really fun to work with. And it was yeah, we, kind of a crazy shoot day because it was like, we'll get a shot. A day too. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get a shot. And then they would choreograph, like she would teach him the choreography and then like right. like 10, 15 minutes. And then we're just like, all right, you guys ready? Let's shoot this. <laughs> and, like, and we blocked it out between like four different or however many sequences there are. But it was just basically, okay, learn the choreography. We're going to shoot this. And then let's move on to the next one. And let's... it was originally supposed to be two shoot days because day one was going to be shooting most of the fight sequence. But we ran into a couple of problems. The first problem was is the locations that we had chosen the day of one of the parks had like a two field trips going on so there was a bunch of like high school kids there so like okay this isn't gonna work and so we had to find another location and then it just started like thundering and raining so we just got rained out and then we had to delay it to the, our last day of course we're super nervous because we're like okay we gotta start at 6 a.m and just go for 12 hours and uh that was yeah that was probably the worst part <laughs> just getting rained out losing a whole day of shooting because we had to fly the actors back the day the day after or yeah. i think that night so, so yeah. least, well, it could have been worse yeah. it could have been rain raining the both days right so yeah well we had a i had a camera that i didn't care about and i was like we're gonna shoot it regardless <laughs> was the was the day overcast and like it seemed like it was like you didn't have any lighting issues uh yeah it was overcast for most of it and then uh it was kind of racing though. So sort of these giant storm clouds that were happening. So we were just, we were just running through things. So a lot of it, like we couldn't do retakes on stuff. We're just like, go, 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 go. And that's a really soon, cool dramatic backdrop. So <laughs> as soon as we finished, it just stormed and we got like kind of stuck on the mountain because there's a lot of people out there as well that were just kind of camping and doing whatever and so it just stormed like crazy so as soon as we packed up our last piece of gear it just stormed but yeah overcast it was was a benefit for us we had bought brought some uh um some stuff to kind of diffuse the lighting but for the most part since we're in such a rush we just took advantage of the overcast lighting <laughs> where was this location it's beautiful Oh, it's up in uh, Provo Canyon. Um, actually, one of our buddies pointed it out because the locations that we had originally found didn't work out. Like either we had scouted it like a few months prior, so we didn't bother checking. And so some of the weeds have overgrown, so we couldn't use some of our locations. So this one was like a last minute find. It's one of the parks up in Provo Canyon. I forget what it's called. It's a big spring. It's, yeah, it's something like that. It's past Vivian Park uh yeah it is gorgeous it's i mean that's that's utah for you everything is just kind of like you pull off the side of the road you get this beautiful vista you're like okay we'll use it and there's no need for permits you just go <laughs> so. yeah and it's like and it, like it hasn't been the de de i call it the de decamination of like hasn't been overly filmed right like yeah. it's, no it's like a unique look right no that's what makes it so cool like you find something cool climb it jump on it shoot it they're cool with that <laughs> So talk to me about the, the choreography because it's pretty, I'm watching it again and it's like I've watched it a couple of times and it's it's pretty, like I'm fortunate enough to see a lot of action like independent movies and it's pretty outstanding. So she did the choreography, with, like 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 she did she tell you exactly what, before you started shooting, I know you did a little training with him, but like in terms of getting your shot list down, like how was that process of like 
tell her telling you what she what she thought of doing or the collaboration you guys had so we so she did she drove out to us uh one time and then we flew her out twice to finish the choreography so we did it all together because originally she had a choreography in mind and then she was like okay like you know i want to do this short and then i was like okay i'll write the script and then after she saw the script she was like oh this kind of changes the choreography the storytelling changes the choreography so sure. we kind of redid the whole choreography from scratch with the three of us and we did it in like johnny's basement my parents basement <laughs> like we're just figuring it out and at the same time we're just using our cell phones for kind of like previs shots where we're just like oh this angle would look good here and honestly because like our location changed a lot of our shots changed sure we had to adapt because like um one way facing was like beautiful mountain vistas and the opposite was like uh park and like like parking lot and people jogging and stuff yeah. so like a lot of it is that we're just shooting on the side of location and then pivoting like so we're the continuity on the background is uh kind of all over the place but yeah we had to change a lot of our shots on um figure it out there but luckily johnny and i have done some other fight sequences so it felt a little bit more comfortable and liz is kind of you know, she gave really good suggestions and she's filmed some fight sequences as well. So. Gotcha. And yeah, and she's always in the offensive. Like I said, I'm kind of being like general about the fight sequence, but she, he's always the fit, like, and he's always in defensive. She's always in offensive, I guess. Right. So I don't know if that makes the choreography easy for him, but he's always backing up, I guess. Right. While she's lunging forward. Yeah. That makes I, sense. And there's, there's a sexual chemistry going on while the fight sequence <laughs> is happening too. Right. Oh, good, yeah, yeah. That's that's what that's we want. What, that's it. Yeah, that's how Jeff wrote it. <laughs> it's like foreplay, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. and I think. Sorry, no, Jeff. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. So the the whole the whole premise was obviously it's like in the in the original story cartoon. So Suki and, and Sokka end up um, dating and um, they get together, and so there is supposed to be this sort of flirtatious flirt, flirtatious element there. Um, and, you know, I think one thing that we talked about that was really funny is that we wanted to be exciting, right? Kind of this playful, aggressive banter between the two of them where they're, you know, they're showcasing that they're both skilled, skilled warriors. And so without killing each other, they're just fighting. However, you know, when you do the choreography, you, you can kind of get carried away in the just the the whole action uh, side of things. And so there's some parts that it legit looks like they're just trying to kill each other. And we're like, how do we remedy this? And, you know, later when I go in and I do the sound effects, I'm adding like these blade and club sound effects. I'm like, if you were to hit her on the head, it would crush her skull. So I'm like, oh, well, you know, like it's, you just kind of have to accept the fact that like, this is fiction. This isn't realistic. Uh, it's meant to look really cool anyway. Hopefully people would just buy it as like, hey, this is a really cool fight sequence between these two, two warriors. And so, uh, but yeah, that was the whole element is that there's supposed to be some sort of attraction between the two and it's supposed to be showcased and, you know, kind of how close they get and how they fight. And we wanted Suki to be in control at all times because in the cartoon, Suki yeah. is the most experienced fighter and she's the one that teaches Sokka. But like, so in this one, obviously we took a little bit of liberties and making Sokka more advanced, but like, so our way of showing that she's still you know, the powerful one is like you said, she's always on the offense. She's really calm about the whole thing. He's struggling the whole time. So that's how we try to tell a little bit more of the characters through the fight sequence. She's putting then, him in his place. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And originally because uh, the time constraint, the script was a little bit longer and it had a little bit more like playful banter before ramping up into the fight sequence. And then we lost a lot of the day. So we just shot like the very beginning of the dialogue and just went straight into the fight sequence. So when we're editing this, Johnny and I were just like, is this too serious? Like, are they just like, we just went from zero to a hundred. And that was like our main concern about releasing it. It was like, people were just like, these guys are just trying to kill each other. Yeah. Like, ah, whatever. Let's see how the audience goes for it. <laughs> so, yeah. So tell me about uh, the costumes, doing the, like finding the costumes for it. Uh, Johnny's uh, the brilliant costume maker. Yeah, you know, 
<laughs> order a couple order a couple pieces on Amazon, bring it over to my 15-year-old sister-in-law who sewed it together and uh voila, you got yourself a costume. So that's um, your that's your wife's wife's sister? Yeah, yeah. It's her younger sister and she she's actually sewed a couple of costumes for our films. She's really good. Um so her name is Alice Linford. You'll see her in the credits for costume designer. And um so we actually designed sock the grant's costumes for the soccer character so his costume we just patched it together um got a couple of pieces from amazon some i had some extra like uh fabric that we can put some detail in there just weather it up add a few other like accessories and then you know it's a pretty simple costume for the kiyoshi warrior for suki uh liz's character she actually had a friend of hers make her that costume and beautiful beautiful elaborate costume because that's a little bit more complicated, had a little more like stitching and leather components or, you know, full leather. Mm -hmm. And it turned out awesome. It looked really cool. And what was impressive is that, as you can see in the video, there's some pretty intense like fight moves and choreography that would be demanding on regular cloth. And it held up really well. Like, I don't think we had any complications except for the, the skirt piece being a little too long. We had to pin that up. But other than that, it was totally fine. Yeah. So, okay, so we're so we're doing this on March twenty fifth, two thousand twenty four. The film's been up on YouTube for a couple months. It's got twenty as as per now. It has like twenty three thousand views, which is great. Is that what you and you guys have got other films that they're, they're all doing well? JNJ Studios. Is this a kind of a business plan for you guys to do like these kind of fan fiction films and put it on YouTube and get some traction, put some advertising on it? I, I think that would be the hope, right? Like the thing is, is that we're just very passionate about like telling stories and stuff like that. Johnny made one that did really well. I think it's got four point four point five. The last, yeah, the last of the Airbenders, yeah, point five million. And then, um, yeah, I mean, that's hope. We have uh, some other projects in the uh, in the pipeline. Another, we have part two of the Avatar, the big project that, um. We have we have a gravity fall short, and I think that's all that comes to mind for now. But yeah, we're gonna try to make it into a business. Hopefully, it's kind of a hard. Well, for four point five million views, it's pretty good. Like, uh, it, I guess it just went viral and just kind of took off. It's funny how things. Like, I'm not saying that that this film that your film's great, but it's like one film. It's like this film is just as good as that film. But why did that film take like, take off? Do you guys know the reasoning or? <laughs> you, you gotta you gotta tell us we're trying to figure that out <laughs> yeah it's the, the funny thing about that is that when we released the suki and Sokka one yeah it, it picked up actually and we got a lot of views very quickly but what ended up happening is that the other avatar project picked up even more so anything that we did promoted the first yeah, project sure. so we haven't figured out how to translate it to the opposite way around it just you know you know what that is? you just have to make you have to make more avatar films just to be perfectly honest with you yeah yeah, yeah. and that's literally what we we, we were talking about like you know it, it kind of just spikes the algorithm i always joke with jeff i always say i wish that viral video would be you know not so greedy and share some of its views with our other videos because we just were to divvy up that 4.5 million you know like each video gets a million views that that looks really good but you know that one took all of it <laughs> so. yeah i know but it's it's it will, it'll catch up it'll catch up eventually right like so you can also tag in that film on the 4.5 you can put the put the hyperlink in that in in your description of that film too right oh, that's a good idea yeah <laughs> so you're saying here's the next here's the next avatar film so people will jump on even if they're watching on their iphones right the, first, the top of the hyperlink will show up and they look, oh, I, I just watched that film. I'll watch that film. And then the algorithm on YouTube will will just go to that film next, right? After they watch that film and then you get more views. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we and I I, I actually don't know if I updated the hyperlink. So I, I do need to double check that because we had that originally for other videos. Um, Like you just kind of drop in that hyperlink yeah. right away. Yeah. But you're totally, you're totally right. I need to... Uh, um. We need to look at that. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, I'm just starting this, like I got, cause we do the feedback videos on YouTube and we have the, our platform. So I'm just starting the, the podcast as we are talking to you before. So this, you, you guys will be like the fifth, I've, I've done like 1100 of these, but you'll be like the fifth official podcast on YouTube. So I'm learning that I'm just figuring that out too. Right. So basically yeah. 
<laughs> so, but I used to get, I used to do shorts back in the, in the infant stages of YouTube, like in the 2006, 2007 era. Yeah. And I got a lot of my films did very well and I kind of figured it out, but there's all these kind of little phonetic finicking. I, 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 obviously the world has changed. The YouTube has changed in 15 years, but there's all these angles to play, I guess. Right. We're always open to learning more. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like the feedback and we can't, we will back. not, we will not act <laughs> professionals at all. <laughs> so I think film. you guys are onto something because it's like there's obviously a there's obvi obviously an audience for this right it's proven and you guys are smart like you guys got the bad it's like you know how to make a film you know how to direct a film that's for sure you know how to tell a story but you got some pretty good performers like these two performers I think they're like they're on their way <laughs> to, to yeah. su some success right so like well and like um, yeah. Johnny said like we have this knack that like so when Liz first reached out to us she was um, I guess her Instagram was pretty small and stuff like that. Yeah. And, then, and then as we were going on, she was like, hey, guys, like when we we're getting closer to filming, she's like, hey, guys, my Instagram just took off and just went viral. And then like Johnny and I were just like, well, so what's up with all the talent that we find? Like they get bigger, like <laughs> they're going viral, you know, and we haven't done anything yet because like, you know, <laughs> Alina is or like, um, yeah, another one became a K-pop star, and I was just kind of random. Awesome. And we're super happy for these people, but it's just really fun finding these people. <laughs> so, so you, you guys are know what you're doing. That's basically you know, you know, you know, talent. That's the that's the answer, right? Yeah, that we'll take we'll take the credit. <laughs> first time's a fluke. The second time is uh is yeah. maybe coincidence or the first the second time it's like it's, yeah, it's maybe skilled, yeah, yeah, it's skilled intuition, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I we'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're still and, making that. You're based in Utah. Are <laughs> you planning on staying in Utah? Yeah. Yeah. We're both not from Utah, actually, but like we like it. it. There's a lot of cool, like when it comes to productions, like I used to work in the corporate space and we used to go um, around and do like video stuff. And like Utah, you can get some really cool productions off the ground for really inexpensive. And you know like the film group here is very nice i it's it's building up pretty nicely so i will give it i'll give it that it's smaller but it's i like it it's there's a lot of good people here and talented people and so. also like we were saying before you know i had to shoot part of the that avatar fan film that has four million views i had to shoot a part of it in california because i was doing my schooling out there and it's just like you have to be really careful where you go because you have to you, you you do need permits for all the places you shoot at and i think you want one of the places that i thought you didn't need a permit you actually needed a permit so hopefully they don't come after me um because i didn't get a permit but in utah it's so accessible like anywhere you go um it's like if you see something cool there's a 99 percent chance you can literally just go there pull your camera bring your crew and shoot stuff where the permits yeah. are inexpensive here so. Or, and the, or, or and or the permits are inexpensive exactly i think you need permits in the canyons but we had like a film crew of like 12 people and a park ranger stopped us you guys shooting a movie i'm like yeah and he's like do you have a permit i'm like no he's like all right well whatever <laughs> like he, he just yeah. didn't care because it's like you guys are so small and we weren't we weren't damaging anything sure. yeah we're very respectful so it's like they were like cool keep shooting your movie yeah, yeah. And like they like, can do it before before they get a tax break and they in Hollywood come yeah. back, right? So yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. that's so. what's happening in Georgia, right? Like, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, Atlanta. Nobody shot thing. anywhere in Georgia, but now every every nook and cranny of that state has been shot, right? So happened in Toronto, where I come from, right? Like it's like every okay, yeah. angle of Toronto has been shot. So apparently, Kevin Costner is building like a movie studio in St. George, Utah. So like that Here might change yeah, things. <laughs> so, that's his next stage remember. right that makes sense yeah. but it's, it's about but it's about creating jobs and it's about at the same time the the positive is that there's going to be some group it's building up crews right building up talent yeah so you have access to more talent that's what that, that's the that's the, the you know we're talking about the the, the minor you guys are so smart you guys will figure it out but like ha having a good film base is good because it builds talent right it builds community so and it creates jobs too right so the yeah. thing that was funny is that we were looking to get a permit for a location north of Salt Lake called Antelope Island. And, you know, permits are super inexpensive and we were able to, but we had such a wet season that um, the island had been overrun with spiders. 
and one of the crew members was just like you guys film out there and it's like no way in hell am i going out there <laughs> he's like, yeah spiders that fill the whole island and we're like hey let's go it shouldn't be too bad and he was like no no <laughs> no and so we we shot in the mountains instead <laughs> so. or you can write a script around around spiders right so, yeah seriously yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Plus Fantastic. We'll help. We'll help to promote your film anyway. Like it's like well, you guys are on your way. I can tell that there's like this. Like I said, I watch a lot of fan fiction films, and and they just don't work, right? I'm just being honest, right? There's something. There's something missing, and you guys got it. You guys got what it takes. I really enjoy the like every every aspect of the filmmaking, even the special effects in the beginning. We didn't even get to. So let's talk again when you make your next film. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank Thank you. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks.